parasite the same way mice are, researchers tested the reactions of chimps to the smell of leopard urine. And they found that the chimpanzees not infected with toxoplasma investigated the smell of leopard urine less often, avoiding the smell to the best of their ability. The chimps infected with the toxoplasma parasite, on the other hand, investigated the leopard urine far more often. Their fear of it seemed to be diminished, causing them to act more recklessly, just like rodents infected with the parasite. So somewhere in our evolutionary past, it's possible that the parasite evolved to alter our decision-making skills as well, or even attract us to our own feline deaths. Many of these studies were small and much more research needs to be done to fully understand the impact of Toxoplasma gondii on our brains. But these results so far have scientists reconsidering everything they thought they knew about the parasite. While the Cordyceps fungus may never bring about the zombie apocalypse in humans, our actions and behaviors may still be influenced by a parasitic force that definitely does not have our best interest at heart. To me, fungi are one of the most fat. My cat is sitting behind me right now, Sag. It's so Jover for me, guys, Sag. Fascinating, mysterious. I think one of the funniest things is like whenever we cover this sort of shit, people literally, people literally turn around and go, I don't really care. The cat makes me happy. And therefore, I literally, even if, even if the most insane parts of this is uh, true, okay, I still like it. Which ironically, you know, is proof that it's mind control. I die for my cat and I don't care if it's brain control. Yeah, I know you don't care. That's the whole point of brain control, mind control. All right, let's get to the uh, the the uh, trans uh, news coverage. Uh, it's gonna, you know, it's, it's uh, before we get to like you know Twitch drama and shit like that, some fun stuff. Um, some not so fun stuff. Okay, first and foremost, uh, I tweeted about this already. Uh, while I was, uh, while I was offline, I was spending my day away from, uh, the internet, but, um, First bill there are, okay, here's some fun stuff and then not so fun stuff. There are efforts in, uh, Wyoming right now to raise the age of marriage to 16. You heard that right. They want to raise the age of marriage to 16 and they have stalled as the Wyoming GOP is urging its constituents to oppose a bill to add a minimum age, not because the bill's too weak, but because the bill stood to rob their constituents of their constitutional rights to marry a child. I don't know, like, you know, we talked about cat lovers and, and mind control, but I don't know what kind of mind control the conservatives are running on, but I guess, you know, this is the, the output. This is what they're advocating for. for. Let's take a look. consideration is House Bill 7. Reading clerk will read... Please read it in. Now, remember, this is like the gross. same party that fucking keeps saying that, you know, queer people are groomers, queer people are groomers, age yada, age yada. Amendments. Arguing that it puts an arbitrary limit on child marriage. I'd ask the body to resist this change and vote no on the bill. And interferes with parental rights and religious liberty. No. Uh, there are communities such as our Amish, Hutterites and Mennonites here in Wyoming that um, would be in violation of this law if it was to pass. It's 15 to 12. House Bill 7 has passed the Committee of the Whole. So it passed the Republican controlled House, but the proposal to impose an age of marriage is 16 was favorable with some, with some Republicans in the state. Not all Republicans have thought uh, that it's adequate, leading to the first real momentum the bill has seen in some time. Wyoming is one of eight states in the country without a minimum age requirement for marriage. 
and ranks among the top 10 states in the country for child marriages, which is like the most fucked up watch mojo list of all time. <laughs> top 10 states to marry your child bride. <laughs> oh, God. No, this is in the USA, right? Yeah, of course, dude. The party emailed materials to constituents from the Wyoming Family Watch, a religious lobbying group organized by a conservative pastor in the state, arguing that preventing children under 16 from marrying denies the fundamental purpose of marriage. Currently, the state allows marriage licenses to become a get-out-of-jail-free card for a rapist, particularly if they impregnate the victim, trapping kids in a legal quandary. They can't escape as it enters a uh, minor into marriage before they're too old to bring, in a, uh, bring legal action. So that's a thing that happens in the United States of America in Wyoming. It happens in, I guess it's one of the top 10 states where you can do this, by the way. There's, there's other states where you can do this. It's just, you know, remember, it's the same groups that are also simultaneously calling, uh, you know, uh, uh, queer people uh, perverts and, and groomers and stuff like that. So that's cool. That's a, that's a cool uh, way to start the story. Here is some other um, information. An Arkansas state senator, Matt McKee, asking a trans person at a legislative hearing, do you have a penis? You said that you're a trans woman. I trans female, yes, ma'am, sir. Do you have a penis? Uh -oh. That's horrible. Yeah. What an insane, like, dude, there is no better indication that one, these people that are always like the anti-trans crusaders are just the biggest fucking perverts, number one, through and through, okay? You're a fucking freak. You're a goddamn pervert. You should be disbarred and, and disrobed and uh, no longer uh, able to serve anyone, okay? So that's number one. And number two, they also don't think that the people that they're talking to are human beings because you... You would never ask that to someone who you consider is a is a human being. The a guy asking is a state senator. I know. Yeah. You're the one. You're the one that brought that into the discussion. You said that you're a trans woman. You know. Ah. Uh. It's wild that this basically is like a normal question. Also, the answer to that question wouldn't change his views either way as well. And also, it is completely irrelevant. So just understand that. Now, the reason why I bring up state senators is because they are leading the battle against trans people at state legislatures all around the country. There are numerous examples of this um, happening in Florida, happening in, in states all around the country, okay, all around the nation where there are new anti-trans laws that are being put into effect. Um, anti-trans laws that, you know, basically make it illegal to be trans in public, like the anti-drag laws. Uh, anti-trans laws that ban, it starts off by like banning queer books and shit in libraries, and then moves all the way to uh, banning the mention of trans people and gay people as well uh, in, in, you know, any kind of schooling, any kind of education system all the way to, uh, you know, making it illegal to, one, get any kind of hormone replacement or even hormone blockers before, uh, before the age of 18, but even after the age of 18 as like a consenting, full-blown adult, okay? No parental supervision. The state supersedes that. The state supersedes the, the interests of the, of the minor that we're talking about. The state completely overrides two consenting adults even over the age of 18 making these decisions uh, with a responsible consenting medical professional who understands it significantly better to some random dumbass hick inbred cousin fucking state senator who is too busy fucking a donkey in the ass and then you know takes some fucking time out of their busy schedule fucking donkeys in the ass to come into the state and and uh you know uh, decide that uh, they should legislate how trans people uh, uh, can and can't exist. Okay, so that's that's an insane thing. Uh, completely abysmal, abhorrent. I don't know how to uh, deal with it. But of course, remember, remember, the reason why I started the conversation is because uh, they try to regularly, they try to regularly make it seem as though 
trans people existing in society is somehow grooming children is somehow bad for children. Meanwhile, simultaneously, in a lot of these states, they are the ones who are literally defending child marriages and child rape, okay? So understand that. Like, they're freaks. They are the ones who are doing the actual grooming. They want to do grooming. They think that trans people that just simply want to exist are, uh, you know, trans people that simply want to exist are, uh, are, are bad and wrong. It is the same exact argument that was launched towards gay people when that was fashionable, uh, when it was fashionable to shit on gay people in a similar capacity. Um, here is that same. Uh, here's the state Senator McKee talking about the existence of trans people and TikTok. You said that you're a trans woman. I trans female, yes, ma'am, sir. Do you have a penis? Uh, uh, That's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. You're the one. You're the one that brought that into the discussion. I you're the one never that said anything about genitalia. Oh, it is there, everything to okay. do with genitalia. I don't know Audio. what my rights are Audio. right now. I'm are a healthcare other, professional, a doctor. Please treat me as such. Like that's insane that this bald fuck is like talking over a fucking doctor and being like, "Oh, what's up? You got a dick down there? What's happening?" Like that's crazy. You don't do that to someone. You don't do that to anyone, okay? You can't get away with doing that to anyone unless you think that they are not human beings, okay? So just remember that. They literally think, like, these fucking freaks, these vermin, these scumbags, they think that trans people are just not yeah. human beings, okay? It's, it's psychotic. Next question, please. Senator McKee, that you asked my friend if she had a penis, and I would just like to tell you that even if you have a penis, it doesn't mean that you have honor or that you're a man. Listen, I talked to a 10-year-old girl back in the fall, and you know where she got her idea to have one of these surgeries? Off of TikTok. Because the Chinese were showing this little girl on TikTok who said, this has changed my life. And focus on the implications on the mental health of trans and non-binary youth. One part of this bill stipulates that a trans minor must have no other mental health concerns. This alone would make nearly all trans youth ineligible for any gender-related care. Two of these individuals have made unsuccessful attempts at their own suicide over the course of this past month. By the way, uh... We just glanced over this really quickly, but, like, why the fuck's this guy talking to a 10-year-old? Like, even if it's true, which I don't believe it is, these freaks, bro, you should go to jail, like, straight up. You talk to a 10-year-old, even if it's your fucking relative, I'm throwing you in jail, okay? I'm just saying, like, just jail time, okay? He's a pediatrician, still jail, jail Double jail. Triple jail. T take his doc. He take, take the capacity for him to practice medicine away from him right now. Okay. He already has shown. He, yeah, it's probably his wife. Yeah, he was talking to his 10-year-old wife. Over the course of this past month. Each one of these expressed to me that... This conversation being had by our legislature and these laws that are trying to be passed by you guys is directly affecting their mental health and their concerns that the state that they were born in, born and raised in, that they must consider having to run away with their family and seek to. Yeah, uh, you're so right. Taylor Cryptid is absolutely correct here. These people don't care about trans suicide at all, as sad as it is to say. They don't see trans people as people, so trans suicide is a non-issue to them. Appealing to their sense of empathy likely won't work. Exactly. Mentioning that like trans people are, uh, uh, are, are committing suicide or, or trying to attempt suicide is literally like posting W's for them because they want that to happen. They literally want... They use it against trans people regularly to be like, look how mentally ill trans people are. We're trying to save trans people by literally reinforcing the things that you know, force trans people to, uh, to go out and harm themselves to begin with. So that's also, I don't think that's true. I think they care about it happening more. What? No, I, I'm, I'm telling you. Like they regularly, transphobic people regularly attempt to actively dehumanize trans people 
and then simultaneously speak over them in the sense that like, they're like, oh, you just don't know any better. Like you're trying to kill yourself because you're mentally ill and you're mentally ill because you're trans. And the only way to save you from, you know, uh, uh, committing suicide is by stopping you from being trans is their argument. If you've ever listened to, if you've ever listened to anyone, any transphobe, uh, you know, you don't even need to listen to Matt Walsh, really. They'll fucking tell you. Like, they openly tell you all the time. It's just like, it's, it's a concern trolling. When there's plenty of evidence to show that, like, social acceptance from an immediate friend or family member is one of the leading ways, okay, that, that stop trans people from committing suicide. Like, the likelihood that they will attempt to commit suicide dramatically decreases when you have even one fucking immediate family member or friend in a, a trans person's close uh, circle of support that that uh, accepts them, okay? That's, that's crazy. I mean, there are so many studies on this. There's so much information on this, and yet they still fucking... They still act like this is not the case. Oh... Hold on. These people see it as a sin that needs to be repented and pushed down as barbaric. I just, I, I think like, I think that it is, um, it's, it's partially that. And I think it's also partially that uh, it's a very, it is a, it, I hate to say it, but it's a very convenient uh, red herring. That's it. Because trans people do not have the material uh, power to protect themselves in many instances. Um, there is a more empathetic side to like understanding transphobia that I regularly engage in. And I talk about it all the time where I understand why people uh, have a, the normative position of like um, the normative position of, of transphobia is like social conditioned. Okay. I talk about this all the time when I'm trying to convert transphobic people um, from, you know, uh, not being transphobic. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's understandable because, like, gender is, is so rigid in the way that we understand it, even though it's that, that belief system is antiquated. And it's such a profoundly important part of our lives. That's why you see a lot of internalized transphobia from trans people before they recognize that they're, they themselves are trans and, and literally uh, undergo gender confirmation. It's a, it's a complex struggle. It's a complex situation, okay? Um, however, I think these, these politicians are, are operating not with the knowledge of that reality, but instead uh, because it's like a very easy, they, they think that like trans people are weird and gross and they think that enough people also feel that way or at least like don't care enough about trans people so they can get away with just like using trans people as like a, uh, as a, uh, you keep asking what a red herring is, but like uh, responsible for the, for the problems that we face in society. Okay. Yeah, ESL chatter. That's their, that's their perspective because it's such an easy fucking launching pad. It's a scapegoat. Yeah, scapegoating. Sorry, not a red herring. Scapegoat. A distraction. <sighs> Is it wrong to deny minor surgery for transitioning? What about hormonal treatment? Trying to learn more. I believe that the best thing to do for minors is to leave that to medical professionals who know more than all of us combined and the parents and the family members and the, and the responsible minor, uh, the, the party itself. That's what I believe. I think that medicine is a very complicated thing, okay? One that we don't really have a full scope of. Uh, sometimes even as doctors, they don't fully understand the ethics behind it. I don't think that like, we should leave it up to Jordan Peterson and some random fucking high school graduate piece of shit who uh, is a recipient of intergenerational wealth 
and therefore in their small cousin fucking town became a state legislature because they were able to grease enough fucking pockets. Like that guy should not have a say in what kind of health care a, a minor or an adult gets. I don't think Ben Shapiro should have a say in what kind of health care a minor or an adult gets. Okay? As far as like trans children getting surgery, we're talking about like a total of a thousand kids. So it's not even it's not even up to discussion. It's just a silly way to hone in on the least defensible part of an argument that Republicans regularly laser focus in on. It's like talking about abortions and then talking about post birth abortions. It's like you're talking about an incredibly complicated medical procedure that only happens. Okay, that only fucking happens when someone needs it. It's like a medical necessity. Okay, they make it seem like that's the only way that it happens, just like they make it seem like like children that are 10 years old are like, I'm trans. And then the doctor's like, here you go. Here's some HRT. Do you want me to fucking, uh, you know, uh, do you uh, do you the, the kindness of doing a fucking a, a, a double mastectomy now? Like, no, that's not how that works. Okay? And then on top of that, they they explain surgeries in the most brutal way possible because surgeries are always brutal. You can describe any kind of surgery as brutal because ultimately all surgeries are brutal. You're literally breaking... In order to do open heart surgery on a minor, for example, you would have to break their... You have to cut open their chest, break their fucking rib cage, and put your hand inside of their fucking... The, 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 the crevice that you created, okay? So... Judging by that fucking peasant brain attitude towards surgery, should we stop conducting surgeries on minors that need it? No, of course not. So it's really fucking stupid when Republicans get to take this conversation to, to like some psychotic fucking limitations and, and make it seem like this isn't, uh, this isn't uh, uh, one, incredibly unique in general, okay? And, and completely irrelevant to like whether trans people should be able to exist in society alongside cis people okay they always hyper focus on like random dumb idiotic shit and they bastardize the conversation to make it seem like doctors are just like